Welcome to the service inspection of the Helios 11 solar-powered explorer yacht. I built the hull from plywood and glass fiber by hand and so far it's been holding up very well. No moisture. This is the only moisture I have. There was some water coming through my hatch during heavy rain and somehow it uh, kind of went up with the capillary force through the, the seam and ended up coming in here and a couple liters of water then down here in the front. That was over a month ago in Finland. Currently I'm in Liege in Belgium and uh, now I noticed when checking different things with the flashlight that whoa there's a bit of water here and I'm taking it away there's no leakage it's just coming from the hatch which I have now improved looking at the completely wet surface there's no damage yet even though I haven't really cared about water tightness too much on the inside of the boat I've just covered most things with one layer of epoxy and there's no mold no water ingress whatsoever and that's a good sign because the bottom of this hull is first covered with a thick layer of epoxy on top of the plywood and then over that we have two additional layers of kind of over soaked glass fiber weave which is 500 grams thickness and on top of that I have three layers of epoxy paint and a final layer of hard epoxy paint on top of the bottom. That makes for a very waterproof surface and because the inside of the bottom is almost completely exposed that's gonna mean that there's very good ventilation as long as we don't get moisture from condensation but that hasn't been a problem either yet. Maybe in different climates that will be a slight problem. And yesterday we hit two big logs in the canal. We got a bit scared. It was a very big bump and also the engine took some hit from that, but uh, we checked everything and there's no damage. A plywood, nine millimeter plywood, plus two layers of thick glass fiber and uh, six layers at the most critical areas, the joints and the impact zones. That means getting closer to half a centimeter of glass fiber. It's very strong for such a lightweight boat and uh, I feel quite comfortable riding this. I don't get any stress from hitting small objects. Of course, if I do hit a metallic uh, container I might get into some trouble, but the likelihood of doing that would be pretty small. If I hit one of those containers that I've heard some rumors of that you can do in the Mediterranean or the Atlantic, I might get some surface damage and a slight uh, kind of moisture getting into the plywood, but we wouldn't get any uh, hull penetration. That would be almost impossible unless there's some sharp object, because the boat is so light it will kind of bounce off anything huge. So the biggest danger, a lightweight wooden and uh, glass fiber design such as the Helios 11 could face is something sharp. And we will just not hit anything sharp. That's the plan. A good question to ask here is why would you use plywood and glass fiber to build a yacht? Isn't that sort of primitive? And uh, I've gone through the data I've gone through a lot of research and discovered that if you build a plywood boat, a wooden boat covered with a bit of epoxy and glass fiber properly, it will withstand the elements for over 50 years, especially if you have a well ventilated bottom area. Any moisture that comes inside of the hull, inside of the wood, will actually evaporate through the not so watertight layer on the top but still the water tightness of the inside of the hull, of course, needs to be good. And that has been proven now, uh, having all this water for over a month inside of the hull. I made sure that every area of the hull is accessible. Not very accessible, but uh, accessible enough. I have this rag. And there's the water. 
And now to go into the future developments of extremely efficient, fast, lightweight solar explorers. I will still use plywood most likely, unless something or somebody changes my mind. I've come to the conclusion that it's so much faster to build and uh, less expensive. So whenever I compare a plywood design with a uh, foam core and glass fiber, or the carbon fiber design even, uh, I will always compare a slightly bigger and earlier boat to a smaller boat that is slightly more optimized with perfectly round hull surfaces as well as a uh, slightly lighter build from a very professionally built foam core and glass fiber composite. So every time I do this comparison I go back to the simple plywood and glass fiber design and see that this is the things I can build most early and if I want to improve the performance, make the yacht slightly faster and better at sea, I will just make it slightly larger instead of making it more efficient at the smaller size. So what I'm looking at for example for my most favorite future model, the Halo 13, 13 meter, roughly 5 meter wide catamaran with very narrow hull. The build will be almost as efficient compared to a foam core and glass fiber composite and I can get almost round surfaces and especially on this swath design, basically super sharp hulls that aren't supposed to be fully buoyancy hulls, they're more like underwater torpedoes but it's not gonna be as easy to build completely underwater torpedoes that completely actually ignore hull speed limitations and make zero waves but we can easily make something in between and that would be this design I have up here these straight narrow hulls that are barely wide enough to accommodate batteries because we have to put the batteries as low as possible to be able to build a narrow catamaran a five meter room is more than enough for me and the only reason to build a wider catamaran would be to get more stability but if our center of mass is so extremely low far below the waterline then a narrow catamaran is going to be the most efficient design for a solar yacht and the beauty of it is that we can technically build this future ship on the ocean with infinite range in a backyard I'm of course not gonna do that I built the Helios 11 in the backyard but the next build will be much more professional, better executed, I will not do all of the work, I will pay somebody, I will find some friends, I will find some eager boat builders who will fulfill my vision into the physical realm. And that's a good way to end this video, stay tuned to the development of ultra efficient solar explorers that's gonna destroy the competition, see in the next video where I go through the details of the swath designs and will run all the numbers of how fast we can go indefinitely and how fast we can go at realistic cruise speeds for several hundred nautical miles non-stop. That's going to be very exciting.